Kevin. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're uh, at Open Space. Uh, this is Hidden Crimes, Are You Breaking the Law? So I'm Kevin Wu. I'm a program director here at Hong Kong Youth Space. Uh, welcome those uh, who joined us for this dual seminar. We have people here face to face and those of you joining us online. So today, Hidden Crimes, uh, it's a little bit of a taster session uh, on some criminal law uh, by our lecturer of criminal law, Hanif Mugel. He is the criminal law lecturer for the CLS and our CPE offerings. Uh, CLS being the Certificate in Legal Studies, and the CPE is the Graduate Diploma in English and Hong Kong Law. So a little bit about our programs. Uh, we focus today on the three programs that really give you uh, what I would say is a very good pathway to the PCLL, which is for professional legal practice. Now the CLS would be our introductory offering, and our CPE is the most popular part-time legal education program in Hong Kong. So uh, for those of us joining us uh, online and in person, uh, feel free to perhaps write down some questions. Uh, we've provided uh, pencil and paper for you to write down any questions that you might have, and we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, for those of you joining us online, uh, feel free to ask any questions you have on the live chat. Uh, also joining me is Dr. Thomas Ng, uh, next to me. He is also a program director, and he'll fill you in on a little bit more of the details about some of our offerings later in just a bite-sized format before we do the Q&A. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Hanif Mugel. Right. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, good afternoon, participants, uh, live and, of course, online. I'm going to be talking about a topic hidden crimes. Are you breaking the law? Now, as you know, a crime or criminal offense is a legal wrong. It concerns unlawful and prohibited conduct. A criminal offense is created either by statute, legislation in Hong Kong, ordinance, or by the common law. The wrongdoer accused who committed the crime, if convicted, will be punished according to established legal procedures. There are different forms of punishment ranging from a monetary penalty to imprisonment. Now, hidden crimes do not refer to crimes which have not been detected. Hidden crimes concern conduct or behavior which is prohibited, but many persons may not realize that it is illegal. And for hidden crimes, the conduct constitutes breaking the law. Now, in criminal law, for criminal offenses, there are two important principles of criminal liability or criminal responsibility. These are called elements. The first one is known as the actus reus, and the second one is called the mens rea. These are Latin phrases. Um, in extremely simple terms, um, actus reus refers to the guilty act, and the mens rea refers to the guilty mind. Now, in sophisticated terms, actus reus refers to the result of the actions of an accused person. It includes the causation, the consequences, the conduct, and the state of affairs which has been brought about by the conduct of the accused, either by doing an act, which is called commission, or not doing an act, which is called omission. So, for example, parents who fail to seek 
medical treatment for their young child by omission will be breaking the law. Now, in sophisticated terms, the mens rea refers to the state of mind of an accused person, which the law says is criminal. It concerns the accused's awareness of his or her actions, perception of circumstances and consequences, and choosing to act freely. The states of mind include intention, knowledge, foresight, and recklessness. So generally, intention refers to doing of an act willingly, deliberately, on purpose, and voluntarily. Recklessness refers to taking of a risk, an unjustifiable and unreasonable risk, where the accused is aware of the risk and the consequences, but the accused goes ahead, never mind the consequences. So for most criminal offenses, to establish criminal liability, criminal responsibility, both the mens rea and the actus reus should exist. These elements should coexist in space and time. Sometimes the mens rea will precede the actus reus, and sometimes the mens rea can be formed during the actus reus. So if a person just has the mens rea, for example, thinking about committing a crime, but doesn't actually carry it out, that is not criminal liability. So the coexistence of these two elements, the mens rea and the actus reus, is summed up by a common law maxim. Actus non facet reum nisi mensitria. Now, in simple English, that means an act alone is not criminal unless the mind also be guilty. So, for example, in the offense of murder, the actus reus is the unlawful killing of the deceased. The mens rea is the intention to kill or the intention to cause grievous bodily harm from which death results. Grievous bodily harm means really, really serious harm from which the deceased dies. There is also in Hong Kong a category of offenses called strict liability offenses. Sometimes these are known as absolute liability. For such offenses, which are regulatory in nature, the prosecution does not have to prove the mens rea. Doing the actus reus is sufficient. So, for example, uh, it concerns pollution, safety measures in a factory, selling liquor to a drunken person. So no need for fault. The fact that something has been done in terms of the actus reus will provide a criminal liability. Let's look now at some instances of hidden crimes. I will look at 20 examples um, in Hong Kong and the United Kingdom, although there are many, many more examples of hidden crimes. In these instances, the conduct of the person constitutes breaking the law. Let's look at theft. Now, theft is defined under the theft ordinance in Hong Kong, which is chapter 210, where a person dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intention of permanent deprivation. That is the legal definition of theft. But let's look at what is meant by property. So that is the first example of a hidden crime. 
Now, in some instances, property is not what we believe property to be. Abandoned property. Generally, things of which ownership has been abandoned are not capable of being stolen. But what about taking items from a person's dustbin? or taking items from a rubbish depot. Is that theft? The answer is yes, because what the owner has done, the owner has transferred the legal ownership of the rubbish to the local council, or in Hong Kong, the FEHD department. So the property remains in the owner, until picked up by the FEHD. So if you think that uh, you're picking up uh, items which somebody, which you regard as lops up, in fact, you'd be breaking the law. All right, but not many people think like that. So items taken from a dustbin or a refuse collection point constitutes theft in Hong Kong. These items have not been abandoned. Items left outside a charity shop or in a charity collection box. And if somebody takes items from those things, that also constitutes theft. Now, finding lost property in a street, on the beach, in a classroom, in a taxi, on public transport. So, if somebody finds lost property, and keeps it, that constitutes theft. The English idiom, which is in many nursery songs in England, which goes like this, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, is not legally correct. Because in lost property, the owner has not abandoned legal ownership. He's only lost possession, but not legal ownership. So picking up items which you think are lost constitutes a crime. There is actually no property in a dead body. Corpses are not capable of being stolen because there is no owner. The exception is if the corpse has, gone, has undergone some necessary skill and procedure for example, preservation or mummification, or the corpse has been donated to a hospital or laboratory for medical reasons. And if a corpse is stolen in those circumstances, that can constitute theft. But otherwise, a, a dead body um, does not constitute property. Wild creatures are not capable of being stolen because they have no owner unless the wild creature has been taken into captivity. And if it is stolen in those circumstances, then it will constitute theft. Treasure trove, relics, money, gold, silver, plates, hidden or found under, underground where ownership cannot be established, belong to the government. Flora and fauna, picking and taking mushrooms, plants, flowers, fruit, growing wild on any land. It is not theft unless it is done for reward or commercial purposes. So if you pick up some wild flowers and decorate a restaurant, for example, your restaurant, then it becomes property um, which can be stolen. So that is the first example of a hidden crime. The second example concerns being drunk in public. Even being drunk in a pub constitutes an offence. This is under the Summary Offences Ordinance, which says any person who's found drunk in any public place or licensed premises commits an offence. Well, not many people realise that. 
So watch the number of pints you consume in a pub. If you become intoxicated, you're actually breaking the law by that conduct. Third example, gate crashing a Sunday service. So if a person obstructs or prevents a clergyman or other minister from operating in a place of um, divine worship in discharge of his duties, that is a criminal offence which can attract a sentence of two years imprisonment. Fourth example of a hidden crime. Beating carpets or mats after 8 a.m. in England constitute an offence. So if you have some rugs and you're actually beating them outside, cleaning them up, that conduct is a criminal offence. Busking in Hong Kong. Playing any music, musical instrument, in the street or road in Hong Kong without permission constitutes an offence. So busking in Lan Kwai Fong, Mong Kok's Sai Yung Street, budding musician, musicians belting away songs on the streets. Beware. Without permission, without a license, that constitutes a criminal offence. Sixth example. Street cries for buying and selling objects. So talking loudly when buying or selling. To utter cries for the purpose of buying or selling any articles whatsoever is actually a criminal offence. Not many people realise that. So imagine a silent temple street, flower market or ladies market. That is a criminal offence. Seventh example of a hidden crime. Attending parties dressed in police or army attire is an offence. So if you fancy dressing up um, under the Seamen's and Soldiers False Characters Acts, that constitutes a criminal offence. Eighth example, swearing in Ocean Park. So if you use any obscene language, shout or cause a nuisance to any visitor or animal in Ocean Park, that constitutes a criminal offence. So no swearing please at any pandas or koalas in Ocean Park or indeed any other animals that constitutes breaking the law. Ninth example, defacing paper currency or banknotes or breaking or melting current coinage. Even though the money and coins are in your possession, they are yours, but if you deface them, that is a criminal offence. Tenth example, if you decide to go to England and visit the mother of all parliaments, the Houses of Parliament in London, and you wear armour in Parliament, that is a criminal offence. There's a statute which for, um, forbids bearing of armour. So if you dress up um, as a knight in shining armour, or like Sir Lancelot, forget about it. Eleventh example. Dogs annoying other persons in Hong Kong, a summary offence. It's an offence to let your dogs annoy your neighbours or passerbys by barking or otherwise. Attracts a penalty. So you better muzzle your chihuahuas and rottweilers. Twelfth example carving on rocks, summary offence again, scribbling a memento on the rock, I was here or X was here, leaving your print, mark, date, 
defacing any rock, I love X or I love Y, any scribbling, drawing or graffiti on a rock is a criminal offense in Hong Kong. So being artsy and budding like Van Gogh's in such circumstances could land you in trouble. Thirteenth example of a hidden crime. Sending obscene, offensive, indecent, or filthy messages. It's an offense to send such messages over the wireless telephony or telegraph, including messages sent by social network apps for smartphones through the internet, such as WhatsApp, Line, or Skype attracts a fine and imprisonment of two months. So although this may be the age of uh, sexting and sexy Snapchats, it may not all be fun and games. Sending unsolicited saucy selfies of one's private parts could land you in trouble. Fourteenth example of a hidden crime. Making persistent pestering phone calls, including silent telephone calls, there's no caller display, is actually harmful to the mental and physical health of the recipient. And a stalker can be charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Also, dishonest use of a public telephone in Hong Kong to avoid payment is an offence under Section 16 of the Theft Ordinance, attracting imprisonment of up to two years. So imagine using a public telephone and dishonestly representing to the creditor you can't pay and so forth. Fifteenth offence. Of a 15th example of a hidden crime. Being amorous and making love in a balcony, even in private premises, but in the public view, is an offence of public indecency under the crimes ordinance. Indecently exposing part of the body in any public place or in view of the public attracts a fine and imprisonment of two months. So budding, passionate Romeos and Juliets, take note. Sixteenth example of a hidden crime. Shooting or filming a video of a couple engaged in having sex in a public place, including a balcony and in the public view and posting it online is an offense under the control of obscene and indecent articles. I think you're probably familiar with some incidents like that in the last few days in Hong Kong. Seventeenth example of a hidden crime. It's a bylaw you're not allowed to use a balloon or a model or other things which fly anywhere on the railway premises in Hong Kong. So watch out for those birthday balloons and kites. Constitutes a criminal offence. Eighteenth example, again under the Summary Offences Ordinance in Hong Kong. Putting out a lamp extinguishing the light of any lamp is misconduct. Although this is a relic when street lights were made of oil lamps rather than electric lamps, but it is still on the statute books as a criminal offence. Nineteenth offence, of a nineteenth example of a hidden crime. It is an offence to soil dirty the dress, clothing, or personal effects of anyone in the carriage of a on the Gongping 
cable car and you spill your tea or latte on someone's dress, clothing, you're in trouble. So hold tight to your tea and your latte. Twentieth example of a hidden crime. Letting your cattle and goats go and roam on government land in Hong Kong constitutes trespass under the forests and countryside ordinance. So next time you decide to go for a stroll in Hong Kong and you take along your cattle or goat for a walk, beware. If it trespasses, it will be, you will be breaking the law. So you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are many instances of conduct, behavior, which can take you afoul of the law. These are instances of breaking the law. And of course, not many people realize hidden crimes. And as I say, it doesn't mean crimes which have not been detected by investigation. It simply concerns conduct of a person which um, constitutes a criminal offense. So that um, um, concludes the brief talk on hidden crimes. Are you breaking the law? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Hanif. Um, any questions for Hanif? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> come, come back. <laughs> Uh, nothing? All right. Uh, yes. Could you tell the, the, the crowd? The what? Yes. Yeah, graffiti and everything, yes. Yeah. Correct, yeah. But uh, I'm looking at the example of rocks particularly. Yeah. Any other questions? So enjoy your trip on the cable car in Chinchin. <laughs> hold tight to your lattice. Right, okay, thank you. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So just a comment from me. Um, <clears throat> so one of these hidden crimes, I'm sure uh, many of you are thinking about examples you've seen on the news. Uh, we have, I believe a few days ago, some opportunistic watermelon thief. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, a watermelon was lifted from the MTR. Uh, so that's a crime. And this criminal is at large right now. Uh, so and what's your motto? <laughs> uh, another comment I have, many lawyers don't know this, but it's actually not a crime to leave work on time. <laughs> um, so uh, if no more questions, uh, thank you again for Henny for sharing, uh, giving us a little taste of the criminal law lectures on the Certificate in Legal Studies and our CPE Graduate Diploma in English and Hong Kong Law, where he teaches on both of them to great review. Um, so now I pass on to uh, Dr. Thomas Ng, Program Director at Hong Kong U Space. He'll tell you just a little bit more about some of our offerings. And uh, Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hanif, for coming today again. I really appreciate your time. Um, in criminal law, action and intention is very important. So if you're thinking about studying law, whether you're thinking about studying law in furtherance of your career, or you like to become a member of the legal profession by, for example, becoming a lawyer, we have three fantastic programs for you. One is, of course, the very well-established University of London LB prep course which is a pathway towards a legal career, not only in Hong Kong, but other places in the world as well. There's a seminar on the 25th of June at 3.30 p.m. Saturday. So go online, go to our website, and you can find out more information about this fantastic program. The second seminar I like to talk about is the, of course, as Kevin mentioned before, the Graduate Diploma in English and Hong Kong Law, right? This is Hong Kong's most popular part-time pathway to qualify as a lawyer in Hong Kong, but also, as the title indicates, qualifying as a lawyer in UK as well. 
there's an upcoming seminar on the 20th of June, which is a Monday at 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. And the deadline for enrollment is coming up very soon. Monday, 4th of July. Monday, 4th of July. So when you apply, apply ASAP because we need time to process your applications. All right. And of course, the program which you know I'm heavily involved in, the certificate in legal studies, which is also leads to a pathway to PCL and working as a lawyer in Hong Kong. There are seminars every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m. So for those of you who are online and also in the classroom, once again, thank you very much for your time and for listening to us. Uh, please feel free. We have social media on Facebook, um, Instagram as well. Type Hong Kong Youth Space Law and we'd love to talk to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else to add, Kevin? Um, so any uh, qu questions for us about programs or about anything at all? So I'll be joined with our law head on the 20th of June. So that's 7.30 p.m. So we'll, we'll be very happy to answer any questions you have uh, in re relation to our MMU programs. So specifically the Graduate Diploma in English in Hong Kong Law, where we have the application deadline coming up like I said, very soon. Uh, admission is very competitive and priority would be given for people who apply early. So that would be my advice to anyone who's considering going the CPE route. And if you're interested in knowing more about criminal law, right? There's criminal law subject in the certificate in legal studies. Um, there's also criminal law, of course, in the program the graduate diploma in English Hong Kong law. Okay. And of course, in the uh, Bachelor of Laws University of London program as well, you can see in this um, PowerPoint here, um, you know, of course, you can start um, with the certificate in legal studies, but you don't have to. If you have, for example, um, undergraduate qualification already, you can start, of course, you know, apply to the graduate diploma in English and Hong Kong law, and also you can also apply to the uh, University of London LB prep course. And you can see, you know, the pathway where it leads to. Okay, so PCLL is the pathway if you want to qualify as a lawyer in Hong Kong. Alternatively, if you study the graduate diploma in English Hong Kong law, um, you know, there are pathways to uh, UK as well. Okay, so you can see this PowerPoint here. Um, you can start at Hong Kong Youth Space if you like to, all right? If you like to transfer to Manchester or in fact, um, depending on the program, if you choose the University of London program, transfer to London perhaps after one year. Um, so a lot of options, right? Which is uh, information we will need to explain to you in detail in one of the seminars, but you can see um, studying law is really a fantastic option. Even if you decide you don't want to become a lawyer, it is really important whether you're working in the finance field, engineering or management, knowing the law is very, very useful. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask right now or uh, write them down give us to us later social media uh, like thomas said or just drop in a comment you can see the qr code here so you can see um the website uh facebook instagram's the same hong kong youth space law it's very easy to find us uh, email study law at hong kong youth space dot hong kong you dot hk and the phone number here, you just scan the QR code. And remember, Hong Kong Youth Space, we are a non-profit organization. Uh, our aim is just to provide, you know, um, affordable, great education uh, for us, law, to people in Hong Kong.
Any questions at all? We're very happy to um, have Hanif. He's one of our best teachers on the program. Always a pleasure to to um, have him. And, uh, you know, he teaches on many subjects in the certificate and also the graduate diploma in English Hong Kong law, including, of course, criminal law and Hong Kong legal systems, etc. cetera. And um, criminal law is always very interesting, I think. Anything else you want to ask us or any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, as far as the CP is concerned, criminal law would only be one module. Uh, you would also have uh, land law, you would have equity, contract, uh, basically all the foundation, foundational law courses that you need to prepare you either for legal practice or just as general knowledge if you're not planning to become a lawyer. Uh, bridging on one of our <coughs> other questions here in the YouTube chat, um, asking us about the PCLL. So like Thomas mentioned, the PCLL right now is still the only current way of entering legal practice in Hong Kong. Now, um, our programs, uh, we, we definitely believe, as many have done in the past, have taken our courses and progressed to the PCLL. And uh, obviously this is because the PCLL providers recognize uh, what we do and the education that we provide, uh, whether it's in criminal law modules or the other basic foundational courses that we have. Just to touch upon what you asked before, whether you can study either non-criminal law subjects by themselves or study perhaps one module, I'd like to add that the certificate in legal studies, um, which a lot of people uh, use, you know, just because they need it uh, in a job or because of interest, we have five modules or five subjects and you know i understand that some people think well i'm interested in one subject right can i just take that um but you know in a way they're all related all right to understand for example um you know for example we have business associations you really need understanding of hong kong legal systems to you know understand criminal law you really need to understand, you know, the concepts relating to civil procedure, which you also teach in civil and legal studies. So they're all interconnected, all interrelated. And while maybe uh, the title doesn't sound very interesting, subjects such as contracts and torts, uh, especially torts, a lot of interesting cases, right, uh, in torts and contract as well, a lot of famous cases. So I think, you know, and it's only um, for the second legal studies, basically uh, a 12-month course. So, you know, it, it's very, very short. Any questions to Hanif as well about uh, anything that he mentioned at all? Of course, you know, we can't provide uh, legal advice. <laughs> But uh, you can ask us anything relating to uh, law programs or, or law or um, anything of that sort. So just to answer some of the uh, questions in the chat. Uh, so the difference, uh, really the key thing about the graduate diploma in English and Hong Kong law is it really provides the best pathway to the PCLL uh, with the fewest conversion exams. Um, uh, we will mention more of these in our June 20th seminar, uh, really the nitty gritty about applying to the PCLL and why our program really is the best way to step up into the PCLL. Because uh, if, 
as an English program, usually you have to take uh, several conversion exams. Uh, these are standardized exams outside. But if you take our course, you're exempted from them. So that's basically the gist of um, why you would take um, the CPE. But again, more about admission criteria, uh, how to get on to the CPE, uh, perhaps pathways to England, uh, qualification in Hong Kong. Well, I'm more than happy to answer uh, all of these questions on the 20th. And just a reminder as well, um, the certificate, even though it's called certificate, there is um, a step-by-step -step articulation pathways towards the PCL as well. So you go from the certificate in legal studies to the diploma in legal studies, to the advanced diploma in legal studies, and then the advanced diploma uh, for legal executives, which is a pathway to PCLL. And, you know, in every step of the way, you get on a, a legal, uh, you know, certificate and award. So it's a great way, you know, if you're thinking about studying law, it's basically a very risk-free way of trying out to see if law is suitable for you. You know, so sometimes, you know, people go straight in and they decide, well, uh, maybe law is not really for them. But with a certificate, you know, it's 9 to 12 months. It's fairly affordable, um, about twenty to $30,000, depends on the intake. And then you can start and decide, you know, what is for you or not. And, and law is very useful. I think, you know, for most people, uh, whether they are in, you know, the business field as an employer, employee, a lot of things leading to law, uh, you want to start your own business, very important. Uh, whatever industry you're in, knowing the law is very important. And of course, hidden crimes, right? Uh, as we mentioned earlier today, uh, you never know. Uh, having more knowledge uh, never hurt anyone. Uh, one question here, if I'm a degree, degree holder, uh, which course should I enroll, CLS or LLB, if I want to be a lawyer? Uh, really, e either one is an option for you. Uh, of course, being a degree holder would make you eligible for the Graduate Diploma in English and Hong Kong Law and the LLB. Uh, but of course, uh, some students in the past, uh, many, I think many students are degree holders on the Certificate in Legal Studies as well. Um, that's for people who want perhaps more of an introduction to law uh, before you get into the uh, graduate diploma. So we also have many students who finish the CLS and move on to the CPE program. Just one more thing about the certificate. Um, we have two options, the professional stream and the general stream. If you want to become a legal executive, right, then the professional stream is for you. And we'll talk more about this. You know, um, you can watch the seminar um, in class and also online as well, where I explain to you the different pathways. So um, as I mentioned before, the question here is, you know, you have a degree, what up, you know, which program? Well, if you want to have the option of becoming a legal executive, then of course the certificate, um, you know, is uh, a great option. If you want to think about um, practicing in Hong Kong and the option of practicing UK, then of course the graduate diploma in English Hong Kong law is a fantastic choice. And also the level of difficulty is a little bit different, right? The certificate level is more an introductory program. So the ramp, the learning curve will not be as steep, right? It's just uh, easier, more gentle introduction. Um, you know, it, this is very good, especially for students who haven't necessarily gone back to class, um, you know, for a while, right? And also they're unsure about their English ability. So I get a lot of questions. Students ask me, oh, I don't know whether my English is good enough. I'm worried about, you know, um, my English ability. But, you know, if you can understand us, I, I think you're set, right? It's not that difficult. Okay, so feel free to study the brochures that we've handed out today. 
Uh, these are also available online, I believe. Uh, I haven't mentioned too much about uh, our University of London LLB. Uh, that is a very uh, esteemed and prestigious course. Uh, they do have an open day coming up, I believe. So uh, stay tuned to the, I believe, email that we'll be sending out. Yeah, we're sending you an email to all the participants, but just to we uh, remind you that the London ULB Information Seminar is on the 25th this month, right? Half past three uh, online this Saturday. I mean, the, it'll be on a Saturday. And of course, the CPE Seminar is on the 20th of June. Uh, on Monday at night and uh, certificate in legal studies every Wednesday. And, and law degrees are very portable things. I mean, for my, myself, um, you know, my background is uh, I was a lawyer in Australia. So, you know, in a common law system, the skills are, are very transferable. So you see lawyers, who, you know, from the States who come to Hong Kong and vice versa, Hong Kong lawyers going to Singapore to work, um, you know, it, there, there are a lot of opportunities available. So, you know, if you decide to stay in Hong Kong, you know, of course, this will become very useful for you. If you decide, you know, for example, to have a stint o overseas, whether you're thinking about UK or Canada, you know, or somewhere else. Um, you can see on our webpage, there are many examples of students, um, you know, whether they have studied the London ULB or the Graduate Diploma in English Hong Kong Law or the Certificate, etc. Um, you know, we have students who are working in um, many places, in fact. Um, of course, UK, Canada, um, I, I know of many students uh, in Australia and even students in uh, as far away as Estonia I've, I've seen. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, the skills are quite portable, surprisingly, you know, even, um, you know, in other places that you normally might not expect our students to, to be. Okay, uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, if that's all, maybe we'll just uh, end it here. Uh, thank you, Hanif, for the taster session and joining us here today. And uh, thank you for those of you who actually came to support and learn more about our law courses and have a little introduction into criminal law as well. Uh, so perhaps we can stop here. Yes. And we will be happy to take some questions uh, off camera as well. So thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.